Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. That's your boy. Are you having a nice time, huh? Having a nice time with your loves here. Oh, uh, hello. I was not laughing. Okay, you were smiling. What the did you do? What's wrong with smiling? Answer my question. I did nothing. Chill. You're coming or you're staying? This couple has seemingly been struggling with power for a long time. I, I and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if a lot of their conflict has to do with power. That he, you know, a lot of his effort of like, I, I'm going to spend my money how I want to. I'm going to do what I want to. I'm going to sort of coerce Daniel into getting you to stay here in South Africa. Uh, I'm the man. You have to listen to me, kind of stuff. And for her, the power is. I'm not going to stay in the in South Africa f- with you. You're you're going to do what I want you to do. You're going to spend money the way I want you to spend money. And they frame things. You know, she, she. I don't know if I show this clip, but he was he was saying she just you know it's all about her and it, she it's she, whatever she wants. And then she her complaint of him is uh, she, he doesn't like it that a woman can stand up for herself. So. Uh, it's there's a lot of power conflict who is in who's in control which points to traumas for both of them maybe particular particularly Ronald around being powerless you know when you're made to feel powerless then you get a complex about being powerful and I just wonder if that's the relational trauma theme that is dominating uh, at least the foundation of the conflict it's really disheartening to think that we did so well during this counseling, and then to hear Ronald just moments after counseling, the way he speaks to me. At this point, it just makes me feel like there's nothing else we can do for us. Like, I don't know where else we can go productively from here. Well, one, you could try to continue with couples therapy a lot longer than you have. One session, as I always say, is not enough. And for some couples, they'll get worse off right away because it unearths everything. And I will often talk with couples that I'm working with in the beginning, I'll say, so, especially if I detect that that's a possibility, I'll say, so there's a possibility that after this session, because we've unearthed a few things, that you'll be a little raw and maybe more vulnerable and maybe more prone to conflict. And so I just really want you to take, take it easy. This is a process, it's gonna take some time and we, we have a lot of time before us. And typically, couples therapy can, can be years. And you know the, the full pro, you know, progression can be years. And it might be a year or two into the process when we really start to see some gains. So just relax. If you're committed to this relationship and you're committed to trying to make it work, just take it easy and, and don't do anything rash that you would regret later. I don't want to sleep without my stuff. I need to change my clothes, take a shower, wash my hair. I will say that she seems rather calm under the circumstances, although uh, Ronald's behavior isn't healthy. At least it reflects a desperation or an emotional reaction to what seems to be potentially the end of their relationship or at least a difficult time in their relationship. Whereas for her, she just seems like she's done. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean she's emotionally been done for a long time? Does it mean that she's suppressing her emotions? I don't know. If I was to take a guess, I would say that emotionally she's been done for a long time and he has not. Loneliness or anger, I see it as like lack of, I don't know, like lack of thought process. It's like people who will process their feelings and voice them, those are smart people. People who react immediately with anger and all they can do is yell, scream, shout, but they're not actually understanding why they're feeling that way to begin with. So interesting. I I feel like she's saying what I would be saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's weird to hear someone saying something that I would be saying after they say what they say. It, it, yeah, that's exactly right. Now I will say I think she suffers from this as we all do because none of us are beyond this. Uh, I think she suffers from it as well. I'm trying to remember the conflict they got into last week. And she, if I remember right, was not communicating her feelings, her core feelings. I think she was being hostile in a way. I'm trying to remember. But anyway, it's interesting to hear her say that. And and two thumbs up for what she just said. Absolutely. And 
I hope she can apply it to her own life as well. And maybe she does. To me, it's just directly linked to stupidity. At this point, like, my mold has become something embarrassing for me. Like, all he does is disappoint me. And right, so when you hear statements like that, those kinds of always statements and contemptuous statements that usually means that someone has been contemplating the end of the relationship for a long time. He's an embarrassment to me. Yikes. I mean, if that's how it is for her, fine. But that means you're kind of done with the relationship, potentially. And then he's, he, you know, the kinds of always statements that, that she's saying doesn't bode well for their relationship. But, you know, maybe that's a good thing for everyone concerned. I don't know. I feel bad for Daniel, though. And do dumb like this. What about him? So I guess that's on me. Whatever. All right. So she says, well, I guess it's on me because I married him, but whatever. I, I would hope that, but whatever, maybe I need to look into that if this is the end of this relationship. I need to look at myself and learn from why I did that because that'll help me in the future. I, I hope she can do that. And often individual therapy for a few years can help with that. What are you doing here now? You know you're gonna regret being an idiot because I haven't done nothing to deserve What the are you doing here? Do you want me to leave? I'm asking you a question. I do you want me to leave? I'm asking, answer Lower me and I want voice. So this is interesting. It's kind of like Mike. I, she is walking in and he's asking this question. Uh, why are you here? I'm, you know, and he's getting really aggressive. I think what he is passively saying, and it's not effective way of communicating it, is are you here because you like me? Are you here because you want to work on the relationship? Are you saying that you're sorry for what you did earlier? Why are you here? Because I thought, I thought we're done. Uh, but he's instead of communicating those core feelings, he's yelling in a hostile manner. I, need to let I said, oh, lower your, your please. This is my place. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing here is sleeping. Please try and convince me I'm wrong here. You walked away. I walked away because you were shouting at me. Yes, I'm wrong. You literally acted like an ass. I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because like usual, it's never you. Yeah, it's his contention with her is that he's always wrong and she is never wrong. And I, I might agree with him if I knew more about their relationship. I, I imagine that there's some basis to that statement that it's hard for her to admit that she does anything wrong. Now, of course, Ronald, we understand, does a lot of things wrong. And I think that's kind of how they fit together in a dysfunctional way is he's the child, she's the mother, and she is the competent, she's the overfunctioner, he's the underfunctioner. And so he has had this buildup of, of pain and hurt around being blamed for things. And he wants her to admit that she can do some things wrong sometimes as a, as a gesture of love and, and potentially an indication that she's self-aware. And so uh, I think he's communicating that. But he's not doing it in a nice way. And uh, now, if he were differentiated, he would say something, well, so... Uh, my wife of mine, I'm really angry right now. I'm guessing I'm really hurt about what's been happening earlier. I feel like I can admit when I've done something wrong, but you have a harder time and that it, it really just hurts my feelings. And I think I need to sleep on it. And tomorrow, let's talk about it. Let's see what he says. You're sitting it's never there you. saying, right, like usual. It's never you. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to leave it there. Now, if you're Tiffany and you want this relationship to work or possibly work, then you should say, okay, well, if, if that's where we're at, then yeah, I do wrong things all the time. And sometimes I'm a jerk face to you. Sometimes I'm short to you. Sometimes I assume things. Sometimes I can be mean. I don't think that justifies what you've done to me, but it doesn't, it's not an excuse. I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, I have faults and I do bad things. Like she could say that. Let's see what she says. Okay. This is now. You can go to sleep. I'm going to sleep in the front. Okay, well, I'm not going to bother too much. And okay, you're breaking up or you're in a conflict and to call someone a name is 
is not okay. I get it. You're upset, and there's a lot of tension in the air. But calling someone a name, not cool. You can walk away. I must be fine with it. You were yelling at me when we are having a fight. Then I want to walk away, and you want to solve right then. Then, then I'm the piece of for walking away. But you can do it last night. If you can understand that by yelling at me, you're mistreating me, and then after yelling at me and telling me to get the. As I always say, there's a line that couples will cross where they're just trying to win and they're just throwing ammo at the other person. And I think they've crossed that line. And I wonder uh, how motivated the two of them are to actually improving their relationship because uh, there are some signs, particularly from her, that they might be done with the relationship. So we'll watch. The car, then okay, I walked Linus. away like okay, I need Linus. to. Not sorry at all. No, don't sorry. regret it. Okay. Would do it again. Go, go, I walked go, go, away go, 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 and I would do it again. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. That's enough. You don't like to hear the That's truth. That's enough. It's okay. Keep quiet. Know your place. I know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's consistent with other things he's done, but yikes. If anyone did that to me or anyone I know, I would say nope. Uh, nope. Big nope on that one. Not okay. It's one thing to say the things he said before, but that is the tip of the iceberg. If you give in to that, you're just asking for trouble. You're just you're just setting up the next abuse down the line. Because uh, so I hope she stands up and says, "What did you just say to me? We're done." Or you will not talk to me like that ever again. Know my place. <laughs> now, it's one thing to be upset and to be hurt and to be triggered and to be arguing and to be trying to hurt each other's feelings. It's another thing to do that because that is usually the first step or, you know, one of the steps down a road where he is eventually hitting her, he's controlling her, he's not letting her say anything, he's not letting her talk to other people. So, wow. No, my place. Your place is not on top of my head. You're used to a little bitch, right? These women here, maybe they're little bitches, right? That need to go to the kitchen and, and cook when what? you say, I'm not. I won't let you stand on me, period. So if I'm being mistreated, guess what the f I'm going to do? I'm going to walk away. Go. I have nothing else to say to you. Yeah, I mean, I think the two of them are, are done. Uh, at least I wouldn't be surprised about that. It's not surprising. They have had a rocky relationship from the beginning, and we haven't really seen much in the way of warmth and compatibility. So it, it's it's unfortunate for the two of them. And I hope that they both go to a lot of individual therapy and try to recover from this and learn the mistakes they made so that they won't make them again. You think you're royalty. No. You're you think to, you're royalty. You used to be you royalty. Go back to America. You can literally go back to America. So that's what we call stonewalling. We've seen it all here. We've seen defensiveness, the four, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We've seen defensiveness, we've seen criticism, we've seen stonewalling, and we've seen contempt. These are the four markers that John Gottman and team found that if you see those, then there's a high likelihood that the relationship will be over within a certain amount of time. So uh, now there are some couples that manage to pull out of the nosedive, particularly if they go to couples therapy, but it, without any kind of help, there's, according to research, a very good likelihood that they're done and they will be divorced soon. You want me to get my go back to America? That's on you. Hello. Remember that you Hello. said it. Hello, here's your luggage. Go. Back your and go then. Peace the out of here. I don't need the dominant ways or controlling ways. Who the f do you think you are? Do you think right now I'm really happy that I married you because I'm not? Your f words. See, he said, know your place. And now when he is upset, he is, he almost threw his laptop at her, I think. And this kind of behavior is uh, concerning. And if I were there, I would point it out. I've worked with people like him before. They're expressing their attachment insecurities and their attachment injuries through this behavior. Uh, it's not uncommon for anyone to do this, but uh, there is a way for him to deal with this more functionally. Um, my dog is barking. Uh, 
But I definitely would be talking with her about, look, what he just did is abusive. It's potentially uh, illegal in Washington State to make these kinds of gestures towards people. Uh, some people would be surprised at what constitutes a crime regarding domestic violence or intimate partner violence. You don't have to hit someone to commit a, an assault in a domestic situation in an in a intimate relationship. So I want to raise awareness for that because the laws are helpful, at least in Washington State, in this way that it reflects the reality of what's happening, that some relationships can be abusive without someone striking someone and that the government and the law should step in and help people when those kinds of lines are crossed. Okay. I don't think that a married couple should have this much tension. I mean, arguments are expected, but this is just crazy. Not enough. I don't know, because there's not much data, but it's possible that for him, he has a lot of emotional issues from his childhood, and the way that he copes with his emotions is to engage in compulsive behavior. We know he had a problem with gambling and spending, I believe, and that's a way of coping. It, it distracts you. It can give a, a little bolt, a little jolt of euphoria when you win at gambling, this kind of thing. And uh, so I'm guessing that this, these kinds of emotions are the things that he has been trying to run away from in his compulsive behavior. Baby, I need some time alone. He said, get the out of my house. And I was like, okay, I will. And sometimes you'll hear people going through recovery, they will label what he's doing as a dry drunk. Sometimes they'll say that, meaning that you don't need to be engaging in the compulsive addictive behavior to be still within the problematic mindset or the addict mindset, the mindset of it's all about me or I don't need to listen to other people or I don't need to listen to my emotions or... I am not powerless over things. You know, humility, humility is a big, is a wonderful thing in life and, and it's particularly curative for people as they go through recovery. That's why they say I am powerless over my addiction, this kind of thing. And uh, so there's that idea of dry drunk. There's also the idea of a rageaholic. You'll hear people talk about that, that when people go through recovery or they'll become sober, but they won't go through recovery in a meaningful way. And instead of being addicted to alcohol or gambling, they will switch their addiction to rage. And I've never really liked that model because it implies somehow that rage is like an intoxicant or something, and it's not. Uh, what, what typically I think is happening is that, the, as I said earlier, the reason why they engage in the compulsive behavior in the first place is because they have a lot of unresolved emotional issues. And because they're not going through the steps and they're not going to therapy and they're not going to meetings and they're not getting support, they're just kind of alone in their emotions and they don't know what to do with them and so it, it explodes and I think that's what we're watching. Especially when someone makes me feel so unwelcome, I can just get my get the kids from Ronald's mom and leave and just get out of the situation. Careful what you wish for. Careful what you wish for. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. If you didn't know already, we have an audio podcast. If you don't listen to podcasts, they are long form discussions or interviews that you can get on your phone. So you can subscribe there. Uh, some might say our best content is in the audio podcast realm. Also, we have a website. You can go there and check out various different things. And we have episodes that are categorized by topics. Sometimes people like it. That uh, there's, that. there's also a list of thousand plus episodes. You, you can just do a little search by topics and listen to episodes there. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. <laughs>